As you may have noticed, slaughterhouses have become the epicenter of a number of coronavirus outbreaks and uh, this is probably down to the temperature, the perfect temperature in these facilities that just allow that uh, virus to live longer outside the body than it usually does and it, and it already has a tremendous longevity outside the body compared to other viruses. Our leads have however found a myriad of reasons why slaughterhouses have turned out to be the gates of hell. It's, however have found out a total different set of reasons why slaughterhouses are the gates of hell now and uh, they are using this problem that the virus is uh, spreading through these facilities and um, try to launch a number of policies which I will come to in a moment. First I want to run through a number of cases. Um, so in Birkenfeld, uh, that's a, a town near the city of Pforzheim in Baden-Württemberg, uh, there were 400 uh, cases in one slaughterhouse and there is a slaughterhouse uh, of the company Westfleisch in the uh, city of Kusfeld, or oh, that's a town, I'm not sure it's how, how big it is. Anyway, the facility suffers 195 cases. And then there is uh, Vion or Vien or Vien, I don't know how that's pronounced, it's a Dutch company, um, where uh, 79 uh, Germans have been infected and uh, 68 Dutch workers as well. Um, or at least people who live in the Netherlands and in Germany. Um, as it turns out, uh, in that industry, a lot of foreigners, particularly from East uh, Europe, um, are employed. And uh, that is an issue um, which I will discuss in, in a moment. But first I want to say this is an incomplete list. Um, uh, at the moment, there is a focus on the company Tönnies and uh, they are run by a, a dude. Clemens Tönnies had been in the public eye for quite some time. He's also a manager of a soccer club and he is a very outspoken social justice warrior and speaks against racism and so forth. In addition, it is this kind of liberal person that employs uh, illegal um, house keepers and so forth and then uh, also lectures everybody else about how to treat foreigners you know a kind of situation um, is the background uh, and before I go into this um, how this is going to be exploited to deindustrialize the country and uh, to uh, to weaken our market economy. I also want to say that I'm not a fan of any of these people that they have chosen as a first uh, as a first victim. I have already made a video about uh, Mr. Tönnies, Clemens Tönnies, uh, when he was falsely accused of making a racist comment. And I think in that video I already said that I don't feel like defending such a person uh, because this is a guy who lashed out all his life um, on others and he would not do the same favor for me. One way to explore the situation was to um, go after the so-called work treaties or Werkvertrag. And I have to go a bit of a, a long way to explain to you what a work uh, treaty is and why that is uh, being uh, an abuse of the situation for other shady purposes. Um, if you employ a, a number of uh, staff to do the work in your facility, you may also additionally need uh, some extra workers, maybe seasonal workers, maybe you need specialists and so forth and uh, sometimes um, you need uh, a, a, a different company to, to provide that work. Now that can be a purchase, um, you know, like somebody is just delivering something to you uh, that you need. Uh, that can also be a service um, and uh, the work treaty is is more like a service but um, the legal issue, the legal minutia are a bit different and they are to the extent that a service um, a treaty just provides the uh, attempt to complete a job and also the uh, the care uh, that somebody really did his best to serve the purpose while um, the work treaty uh, ultimately uh, offers that um, the risk of the completion of the work is actually with the service provider, so to say. So if you have a slaughterhouse and you want somebody to slaughter an animal there and you don't have enough staff or your staff is not specialized for the given cattle, <laughs> that is a work treaty. And if you live in a country where a, a lot of salaries are pre uh, negotiated in big round tables of the trade unionists and the, uh, the parties, uh, the political parties, the church and his mother. If, if you live in such a country, then of course, um, sometimes the, the main company that provides the product um, and that puts the, the brand on, they uh, may present 
uh, their own employers as well nurtured and 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 in great shape and uh, and everything um, to the wider public. At the same time, they may uh, they may use work treaties to get the job done by people that are uh, less well paid and uh, uh, equipped and and so on and so forth. So this is um, also a way how shady business uh, owners can exploit the situation. In any event, the work, tr uh, the work treaties, work Verträge, uh, will be abolished by 1st of January 2021. Um, that has been already announced. I think the law has not been passed, but it will be. Heike Hastisch, the speaker of the uh, Association of the Meat Economy, Verband der Fleischwirtschaft has told uh, the newspapers of the Funke Mediengruppe, that is um, a corporation that is owned by the Social Democrats, uh, that uh, she fears if these uh, work treaties are abolished completely, the entire work may ultimately go to East Europe and then everybody loses their jobs, the high paid jobs um, in, in, in Germany. Additionally, they will also raise the punishment for um, infringing um, work hour. Uh, commitments and uh, that will rise from uh, 15,000 uh, euro per case uh, to uh, 30,000 euro. Um, and um, a, a general um, Tierwohlabgabe, that's a contribution for the welfare of animals, will be um, uh, created as an additional VAT uh, value adding uh, tax. On, on the uh, meat products and also on milk and on eggs, you know, that has nothing to do with the slaughterhouse. It just started from there and, uh, you know, created a slew of uh, new legislation that is barely discussed. And that is the issue. I have no problem going after Mr. Tönnies and uh, his comrades, um, but uh, this is exploited for a lot of other things. And, you know, milk and eggs have absolutely nothing to do with slaughterhouses. And I don't see how, uh, how animals are mis mistreated only because there is a virus. I actually have no real understanding of what an animal, a particular animal actually needs. Um, but I hate how the discussion usually goes that um, we, we never hear both sides of an argument here. And now we had for years only people in, in TV shows that either said, um, you know, um, animals are mistreated um, and uh, they showed pictures of, I don't know, a sow lying somewhere on the floor and you don't know if that is a healthy position or not, uh, if the crate is hurting the animal. Is, are there any signs of stress or anything? A veteran may, maybe uh, give some details. Or, but we, we are not informed about that. There's actually nobody uh, on the TV set that will say, you know what, that sow is actually treated well. That's perfectly healthy for a sow. You cannot just think of a human being lying in such a, a situation. You also would not sleep like a bat, would you? Um, you have to um, accommodate to a sow and therefore uh, a picture does not tell you the entire story. So you have other people who attack and, and claim that the farmer is mistreating his sow. Uh, or you have people who say, yeah, but, but you know, the market, the market is the reason why the, the farmer has to mistreat his sow. Um, there is no discussion of whether that sow is even mistreated, but there is no expertise uh, built up over the years. If that were really an important topic for these people, as they claim, they would probably um, have a, a more nuanced um, de debate over of what a specific animal actually needs. I can't stand people who claim to be so nice that they cannot even hurt a flower and they are careful about the, the, the earthworm and they, they don't hurt the, the, the spider in their room and so forth. If people go to that extremes, you, you can usually expect that they are shady. This is something that I usually see in pagans and heathens. And I think that comes actually from some underlying paganism that we still have uh, here in Germany. We are a Christian country first and foremost, but um, there, there have always been some underlying currents uh, of paganism. And I think it shines through that romanticism. And if somebody uh, claims to be so overtly concerned over unconscious things, you know, um, cannot hurt an, a fly, then you better ask if they have already stopped uh, human sacrificing or something. Because this pretense of being overtly cuddly and, and sweet and you cannot hurt anything at all uh, usually comes with uh, an underbelly. Hitler, for example, prohibited Shechitza slaughter for uh, supposed animal rights. He wanted to protect the animals against Shechitza slaughter. Uh, this is not new at all. This nice, sweet, cuddly, we cannot hurt a thing, a living thing. 
um, nonsense Pocahontas style uh, is not new at all and uh, it does not calm me down. But outside that she says of course a substantial um, working rights issue there has been a lot of talk about uh, the accommodations. Uh, Mr. Tenius uh, apparently had um, um, companies work for him that um, uh, lodged their workers in um, in little rooms where one bed was um, was uh, rented for 300 euro. Uh, I mean the worker had to rent the bed. I don't know how that scheme worked but that sounds like that was a very poor work environment. But that has been contradicted by others. Uh, I'm not sure how um, how common what is. Um, there is a claim by Westfleisch that uh, an accommodation of their staff, uh, I'm translating, the accommodation of our staff also from the staff of our business partners is similar to that of families and cohabitations. Uh, to, um, generally three to three, four, five individuals live in one flat. So um, if that is the case, if four or five people, you know, share a, a flat and it's not too crowded. I, I really have to uh, look into the situation to make up my mind. So this looks very transitional. I don't believe that these people live like that uh, for years. I think these people just come for one or two months and then they make the active decision to uh, couch surf or to live in, in, in uh, small rooms and whatever. Um, because it's transitional, it's not uh, thought to be a, a permanent situation. These people make the decision, the decision um, to um, live a rough uh, two months or so um, and send back as much money as possible to Romania or wherever they come from um, because they can buy more stuff in Romania um, or wherever that is. And um, that is a decision that I think must be respected. And here comes my libertarian argument. You don't actually understand the uh, situation in its entirety and as long as you don't understand it um, you leave as much freedom as possible. Right? So if the Romanian makes a decision um, that he has a, a big payoff when he comes home um, you may cripple him if you if you deprive him of the opportunity of um, you know dwelling in, in a, a cheap uh, accommodation. And I actually feel very strongly about helping people from East uh, Europe because they have suffered under the left more than enough and whatever one can do for them should be done. And I'm not saying scrap all the laws, I'm saying you know the laws that are on the books just have to be followed. If there is a huge disparity of product prices or salaries, chances are that there is a lot of crime going on in a given company. Tonius for example was found with a uh, multi-resistant uh, uh, microbes uh, many years ago. And if you look into the scans of these companies they have a lot going on. I mean all of them. Um, this is why I, I started by saying I don't like any of these people. They must be punished for their actual crimes but you will find those actual crimes if you look into the books, if you uh, look into tax evasion or whatever um, they have committed because if you can offer a service much cheaper than all the competition but you are not more efficient than the competition, you have no uh, better technology, nothing at your hand and you're still cheaper then it's probably because of law breaking. You just have to find the law. At this stage you do no longer help by creating additional laws. You have to enforce the laws that already exist. If you had put your hands off from law enforcement in the past, new laws don't help. Uh, that would be good if we had not demonized the police, wouldn't it? And I've also found a call to law breaking in my favorite newspaper site, which I believe is also a crime in itself. They suggest that um, supermarkets should form a price cartel, illegally of course, I mean a price cartel is illegal, uh, and uh, uh, should uh, stop uh, luring uh, customers into their shops with uh, offers, with uh, any special offers um, so that um, the, the uh, price for the products are more expensive and for whatever magical reason uh, that helps the animals and the laborers and, uh, and everybody's mom. Um, so that was it for today. Thank you for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye.